an unusual background for being a relationship expert. I was a celibate monk for nine years in my 20s. Uh, so I've been very sexually active before that and then gave that up in order to sort of uh, grow in my own spirituality. And as a monk and a man, uh, you learn to understand yourself very well. So I have a lot of self-reflection as to how I think, how I feel, how I interact, what's going on. Not all men have, have spent the time to reflect on what's going on inside of them. So I really understood myself very well by the age of about 28 and then I shifted into having relationships with women. That's always a fun story to tell, but uh, I shifted. And um, women were very different. So that's how I really came up with the idea of men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Literally, in my own experience, it was like women were from another planet because they thought differently. They reacted differently. And rather than judge them, I sought to understand them. And I was very lucky to have a career at that point as a relationship counselor. Uh, I was motivated to study psychology after being a, a monk because my brother was bipolar and spirituality didn't heal bipolar, so I thought psychology might. Uh, it didn't do it either. Uh, years later, I discovered a solution for all these mental things on a biological level. It's not so much psychological. However, in my own journey, that sort of opened me up to becoming a therapist and uh, listening to women talk every day for eight hours. Really, it was like a study for me. Of course, they loved being studied. They were being heard, being understood. <laughs> I was asking questions and really to understand how women think and feel in a positive way. And I think it's my own uh, comfort with myself that allows me to be non-judgmental. You know, so much of the time when differences show up, we tend to think I'm right, you're wrong. And in my case, I was just curious. And curiosity is always the best reaction rather than judgment. And I'll attribute that to my spirituality. But the benefit of that is the wisdom in my many, many books, which is simply put a way of understanding our differences when they show up in a positive way, rather than resorting to thinking what's wrong with me or what's wrong with my partner. Let me see what just happened and find a better way to interact. I've been doing this a long time. I know the question single ladies usually ask me. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, one, one of the big things is why doesn't he call back? And it was such a big deal. I remember uh, some friends wrote a book called um, He's Just Not Into You, and, which is an overly simplified answer. For sure, sometimes men don't call back. But the, anybody who's been with somebody, you had a great time, and then they don't call back or they lose interest, you go, what? What happened? Uh, it's such a, you, you kind of look at yourself that I say this, that I do that, and, and just doesn't let go because there's no understanding. And uh, so sometimes it is, you know, you meet someone and you find out they're not the right person for you. And sometimes women will say, well, why doesn't he just say I'm not the right person? And I say, are you kidding? Who wants to say that? <laughs> and the bottom line in men is they want to make women happy. But that doesn't mean they want to make every woman happy. I mean, actually, they would like to make every woman happy, but but they don't want to be in a relationship with every woman. And so what happens is when it, when something's not working, not clicking, he's not going to tell you, generally speaking. Uh, he's just not going to call back. So that's one reason a guy doesn't call back. But there's so many other way reasons, and it's very important to understand that. There's ways that she may have sabotaged the interaction and – so there is something she said or did that didn't inspire him to call back or to pursue the relationship. So that's clearly a possibility. And I'd like to talk today about some of those things that women commonly do that kind of turn men off. And uh, then there's another aspect of masculinity, I guess I'll start with, and that's that we as men and women have a different biological system. And, uh, you know, I'm presently working on a book actually called Beyond Stereotypes because Actually, if you've read Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, nowhere in there do I imply or suggest that uh, women can't do everything a man does and a man can't do everything a woman does. Uh, it's just that these are differences that show up in that process. So a lot of people have been critical of the work because they think I'm like fitting into old stereotypes. There's actually no stereotypes in my book that are the traditional stereotypes. It's just wisdom in terms of how many women are biologically set up differently to react to happiness and stress, pain and pleasure. So men basically have a system, and this is building up to a very important thing, testosterone. Testosterone is this hormone that men need at least 10 times more than a woman uh, to feel good. 
if, if he doesn't have his heavy, uh, you know, a good level of testosterone, then he doesn't feel pleasure. He doesn't feel interest. He doesn't feel motivation. And that's what he feels so much in the beginning. It's that all that interest the guy has and that attraction on a biological level, that's testosterone. Now, it's not like you can just shoot him with testosterone and happen. His body has to make it. So he's making this testosterone. It has, it's the foundation of interest and romance and growing together. Okay, so if a man's testosterone level goes down, he's going to feel oh, uh, passive, irritable, grumpy. Uh, he can become judgmental. I mean, it's amazing how, uh, as a man, I can shift from being, my God, she's the most beautiful woman in the world, to, oh, my God, she's got big toes. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, just as women can be really hard on themselves, a guy can be really hard on women, and it's fleeting. For women, it's not so fleeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> they tend to hang on to these things. But a guy, he just testosterone goes up, you are beautiful. Testosterone goes down. He is like, I don't know, you know, I don't feel so good when I'm with her because testosterone gives men energy. It gives men aliveness. It gives men pleasure. So it's really important for women to understand this. If you learn how to create testosterone in a man, then you make sure you're not going to be sabotaging the relationship. So it's kind of like, why do men lose interest? Well, here's the bottom line is to really understand testosterone, we need to do the flip side of that, a little bit about women. For women, it's estrogen. Estrogen have, generally speaking, 10 times more estrogen than a guy, okay? Now, as guys get older and you get these overweight guys that aren't very motivated in life, you know, you can tell them they got a belly. Um, I'm sorry, guys, but that's part of having a belly is estrogen. A little belly's fine. That means he's more in touch with his uh, sensitivities. He's more compassionate. He's going to be more empathetic. There are certain challenges that come with estrogen in men. But a younger man, he's going to, you know, in his 30s and 40s and so forth, he doesn't, he's still got his testosterone at a healthy level. In order to feel good, he needs that testosterone. But when he connects with a woman and they spend a lot of time together and he's doing a lot of things to please her, what happens is his estrogen goes up. Okay, that's really key. It's a, it's, it's sex with a guy afterwards, his testosterone levels tend to go down. Now, it's a subtlety. It's actually his testosterone might be the same, but the, the amount of free testosterone goes down. But we'll just, for simplicity, say his testosterone goes down. And when that happens, he needs to pull away in order to rebuild his testosterone. So a guy theoretically can have a horrible time with a woman and not want to call her back. Or a guy could just be a doesn't fit and not want to call her back. Or it could be a guy that really likes her, has a good time, and they have sex. These female hormones get produced. A lot of uh, oxytocin gets produced as well. And oxytocin is a hormone that will actually lower his testosterone. So oxytocin is the hormone that lowers stress in women. Oxytocin is the hormone of cuddling, of affection, of romance. It's also in there of connection, of feeling love. So all those are strong feelings that come along with estrogen and oxytocin. But you get those two things together, which is what romance is, his testosterone levels will start to drop. He's feeling really, really good with you, but then suddenly he feels like, oh, I can't breathe. I need to get away. And when he starts to pull away, the mistake women can make is that they'll start asking him lots of questions. Like, let's talk about the relationship. Well, why aren't you calling me back? And what's going on? And just Keep this as a general rule. Whenever you feel like you need to ask a guy questions about a relationship, you're going to be pushing him away. If you really want to talk about your relationship, wait till you're feeling very connected and close and you're not feeling insecure. When you're looking for reassurance that there's some future here, it's usually because you're feeling him disconnecting. You're feeling he's pulling away. And rather than ask questions at that time, what you need to do as a woman is pull away yourself. That's where you have to practice detaching and finding something else in your life that brings you a greater sense of fulfillment and happiness so that when he pulls away, he's like a rubber band. He pulls back. He'll get to a certain point where his testosterone levels will come up. Anytime a man is feeling independent or successful, independent or successful, his testosterone levels are going to start going up, up, up. That makes him feel horny. That makes him want to get close to a woman again to bring his testosterone down a little bit. 
So think of testosterone as like too low is moody and passive and irritable. Too high is a bit of a, uh, it's, it's a lot of pleasure when it goes up high, but then it becomes a little too agitated, like somebody who's taken a, you know, an upper. They want to take a downer. Uh, just it's, it's too stressful to his body when it stays too high for long. So he starts feeling restless and the body says connect with a woman and it will bring it back down to just the right point. Then he wants to come close to her. He comes into her, then it will start to go down and he wants to pull away. So there's this dance. So the takeaway from this understanding is the realization that too much closeness can push a man away and too many questions can push a guy away. And rather than when you're on your date, some women are thinking about first date even, second date, third date, we'll talk about that for a minute. Don't, don't ask him a lot of questions. Uh, always answer his questions. If he asks, you ask him a question only from the point of view of starting a conversation, because some guys are not very conversational. So you ask a little question and then he answers. Don't ask another question. Take right off from that question and his answer and start relating to it in some way and be authentic, have an opinion, you know, have a point of view, you know, don't, don't, if you disagree with it, well, that's one point of view. Well, I have a completely different one. Be yourself. That's the most important thing. If you give up yourself to get a guy to like you, he will not like you. You will be giving up your radiance. You'll be giving up your authentic self. Now, I don't mean you, you dump on him. Let's say you're angry with him. We're not talking about your feelings about him. <laughs> We're talking about just your thoughts about life. So you might say, did you go to the Giants game, you know? And he goes, uh, oh, my gosh, you know, the Giants are so fantastic and whatever. And you say, you know, I went to a game the other day. I was driving in my red car. We parked in the parking lot. It was on the third story. I couldn't believe how hard it was to get to my seats. And there was this gigantic crowd. And along the way, you know, we decided to get hot dogs. Have you ever had hot dogs at that place? I mean, really, it's like such a long line. And I don't even know what's in those hot dogs anymore. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? I'm giving too much information. I'm telling you, that's what you should do. Men really appreciate too much information. It lessens the load on them of having to come up with conversation and it gets him a chance to experience who you are. And women will do the opposite. They think to be a good partner, you need to show interest, you need to ask lots of questions, you need to be into him. No, give him the chance to be into you. The right balance of men and women is for the man to pursue you and for you to hold your ground. You don't run after a man and you could be running after a man in a variety of different ways. You could be seductive. You could be sexually suggestive. You can do all these things. But if you're doing anything to try to get him, you're going after him and he's going to go, oh, OK, she wants me. And the men get really lazy when you pursue them. That's the thing is that men bond with women when they're pursuing testosterone is the pursuing in, uh, hormone. It says, I want to impress her. I want to take her somewhere. I want to do something for her. So that's a bottom line is to create that balance again and again. Uh, he pursues her. And it's not like she's quote playing hard to get. You should be hard to get, you know, you're not just going to give yourself to anybody. <laughs> and so sometimes women say, well, I'm going to go to dinner with him, but I don't know if I want to have sex with him. So I'm going to split the meal, uh, uh, you know, split the little, the, 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 the price of the meal because they feel like they're obligated to do more. What you should know women is you're not obligated to do anything. He gets the opportunity to spend time with you at a meal. He's paying for the meal. And actually when he pays for the meal, when he does things for you, that's how he bonds with you. Men bond by making little sacrifices, by saying things and doing things that impress you and getting to know you is how he will bond with you more, not by you getting to know him. What you want to do is get to know what he can do for you. And that gives you the opportunity to experience a responsiveness to him. It's an appreciation. It's an acceptance. It's an openness. That's femininity, and that's what you want to give to a man is the opportunity to be received by you. Mm. I, there's so much there that I'd love to highlight. Just a couple of things that really stood out for me, John, and thank you so much for speaking that so clearly. One thing that really stood out for me as you were speaking is that part of this 
for women to be successful in allowing that space for a man to, to step up, so to speak, is for her to be really centered and grounded in her own value as a woman and to recognize her own value as a woman. Because what I've experienced in my own life and seen happen with many women is when we're not really grounded in our own value and in our own radiance, then we sometimes feel like we have to give more or give too much too fast too soon in order to attract or keep a man's attention. And I've even coined this, this phenomenon as something I call unholy giving because it typically, unlike giving that is beneficial to both, it typically makes the woman feel depleted or perhaps even used and then a man is not really appreciative of what's been given because it's been given too much too fast too soon before he's had that chance to step up and win her affection or her attention or her love. And so those are a couple of things that really stood out for me. And I, I even have called this space that you're talking about a uh, sacred space. There's in the uh, like in the UK, for example, when you go to get on the trains, you know, there's the signs everywhere that say mind the gap. And I always want to say that to women in regards to their love lives, mind that gap, be aware of that gap and don't automatically step into it or you're going to fall off the platform, so to speak. I love that. That is fantastic. Those are great points. Well, yeah, thank you. Those were just uh, highlights on some of the things that you brought out. So thank you for bringing that out. So, John, I know... And I'd like to talk more about Mind the Gap. I think that's a brilliant image for people to have. You know, you get to that gap, you fall in. Now, what's the gap? It's this distance between you and this guy. And it's a distance that he can cross. If he can't cross the distance, he's not going to bond with you. That's how men bond. And women, when you cross the gap, he doesn't bond with you. He pulls away. It produces, on a hormonal level, it's basically going to uh, produce more oxytocin. See, whenever I'm receiving, my estrogen goes up, my oxytocin goes up, and I go, oh, that feels really good. I like that. What else can you do for me? And my testosterone goes down. I go into kind of a passive mode. And... Uh, you don't want a guy to go into the passive mode. And part of minding the gap as well is something that uh, my daughter, Lauren, at MarsVenus.com, she has lots of blogs, and I learn a lot. <laughs> She's really, uh, on a certain level, my mentor for uh, younger people, uh, you know, in their 40s and 50s, 30s, whatever. She's like, uh, talks about the importance of me time, which is time for women to find that fulfillment within themselves uh, so they're not feeling so needy on a guy. I'm telling you, we guys have extra nose, which can smell desperation and neediness, uh, your eagerness. And whether we're conscious of it or not, it pushes our testosterone down. And we kind of go, oh, okay, I don't have to do much here. And, of course, a big issue for women who are dating and you got a guy is how to get him to commit. Well, the more you run after him and, and try to please him to get him to commit, the more he's like, okay, you know, I'm getting paid for nothing here. Well, who can, you know, I'll, I'll just cruise. Uh, so there's a whole dynamic there of giving a man the confidence, what you give him and your responsiveness as you give him. Uh, Cause I'm not saying don't give to man. I'm saying what you give is a kind of love that empowers him to feel confident that he can make you happy. It's kind of a long sentence, but basically when you're appreciative of what a man does and you're appreciative of what he does for you, that gives him confidence that he can do more for you. But when he doesn't have to do much for you and he gets all this love, which you brilliantly just said, when you give him a lot and he didn't do much for it, actually it, it loses his sense of bonding. It's like uh, you would think he would think, oh, this is such an easy job. I don't want to do it. No, he really has to feel I made something happen. You know, part of the way we are as men and, uh, you know, my book, Conscious Men, it's really a whole exploration for men, but also women to understand men is to go deeply into these qualities of masculinity. And the number one quality of masculinity is to feel successful. That's what we want. And, you know, you can just have a guy watching a football game and if his team wins, his testosterone is off the chart. Sex is going to be great that night. <laughs> if the team loses, it's going to go down. 
uh, it's success because he's identifying with his team. But the, the idea here is that the more successful a man feels, the more he will bond with her. And it's her responsiveness to him that is what makes him feel successful. And so the responsiveness would be, there's so many little things you can do. You know, women, just as you know, the little things a man could do, like affection and compliments and planning things and being interested and asking questions of you. Those are little things that a man can do that make a woman feel special and important, you know, uh, complimenting her and so forth. It, unfortunately, most men don't know those those skills that the little things make a big difference. But I'm turning it around now. And most women don't know the little things that make a man bond with you. And it's these little messages, little messages again, that say he's successful. So what would that be? You know, here's three things you can practice to take away from today is one of them is a guy's talking and you ask him a question, he says something before you go into too much information, uh, you then always acknowledge him from the point of view of that makes sense. That's one magic phrase. You'll see a guy go, oh yeah, what did I say? <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, another one is, uh, oh, good idea. Oh, good idea. And, and you gotta put a little bit of that femininity in it, and which men can do for each other. Men are like starving for appreciation. Men are competing with other men all the time. Our whole lives is pecking order, competition, uh, getting ahead. And you know, if I open the door for another guy, he walks in and gets the job. You know, if I pass the ball to him, he gets the touchdown, he gets the glory. Uh, if, if, if I compliment him, then, you know, somebody says, who did this? Well, my partner, Bob did this and Bob's going to go, yep, I worked really hard to accomplish this goal. And I just gave away the possibility of me getting the advance of the raise and the recognition of the opportunity. Whereas women don't understand this because women have a code. It's all different, different perspectives. Women have a code. If I say, if I'm a woman and I say, oh, Mary, Mary did this. She did such an amazing job. She stayed up late and she did this and she handled this and we could have never done it without her. Mary has to follow the rules and the rules are, but Jane, Jane, <laughs> you did this and this and this and you did this and this and this. And that's because women will bounce back and forth, but because inclusiveness uh, is an estrogen uh, quality. And estrogen is what lowers women's stress. So women have all kinds of values around inclusiveness. But men, estrogen doesn't lower our stress. It can actually raise our stress if it's too much. See, it's all interesting. No hormone is bad for you. It's just how much, when, and so forth. So estrogen is a good thing for men. If their testosterone is too high, boom. You know, it's just like, oh, I get to relax. I get to enjoy feeling love. When you feel love, your, your estrogen levels are going up and your oxytocin is being produced. If your testosterone is too high, it kind of lowers it down. And that's why what happens for women is, uh, you know, all these little ex expressions of affection, they're the big oxytocin stimulators that help lower stress for women because they lower their testosterone and their estrogen can go up higher to its normal level. Uh, to restore normal estrogen production. Now, it's interesting. You can measure women's estrogen levels today, and they could be too high. And I'm over here saying that estrogen lowers stress for women. And that's because we have something called artificial estrogen, which is in all the pesticides, uh, all the GMOs, uh, all the plastics. They have these uh, ingredients in them, chemicals in them, that when they get into your body, these are man-made chemicals, uh, that the body recognizes and thinks it's estrogen. So suddenly now you've got estrogen being, uh, uh, the, the brain going, oh, I've got plenty of estrogen. So then the body stops making its own estrogen. And it's, it's being in that mode of making estrogen that a woman gets this stress reduction. Otherwise, she doesn't uh, feel like she has to do those things to make estrogen. It's really, it's a little bit complicated understanding, but uh, the body thinks I've got plenty of estrogen, then it stops motivating her to do the things that would make the estrogen. So the body, woman's body knows that I need estrogen to feel good. Okay, what causes me to make estrogen? Loving people, appreciating people, uh, opening my heart to people, um, being emotional, all these things that I need to go there to feel that. Well, suddenly, if you've got an outside source of estrogen, then you no longer feel motivated because you've already got it. It'd be like you know, if I'm hungry for food and I'm looking for food, 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 but then I get food, I'm satisfied for a while. 
I get the benefit of food, but I lose the motivation to get food. And all of our social behavior is based upon, on a biological level, certain motivations that will make us feel good. So women are not naturally motivated to be more loving, for example. Uh, that's what's happened to a lot of women who are in their 40s is they spend a lot of time in the world of testosterone and that lowered their estrogen levels and testosterone raises stress for women and they're being exposed to all of these xenoestrogens there's called and so they don't feel they haven't felt in their younger years a stronger motivation to be in relationship and when they get in relationships with guys it's kind of like yeah, well, it doesn't do it for me. I'm not really that involved with him. That's one side of it. Then there's the other side of it where you can get very needy because you've been suppressing your feminine. So either sides, there's all this hormonal imbalance. Men have hormonal imbalance too. We, these xenoestrogens are keeping men's testosterone levels low. So we are hungry uh, for messages that say we're a success, more so than in previous generations. So this is where you know, sometimes women hear what I say and they say, oh, gosh, just sounds like men are on a big ego trip. I need to support their ego. And just hold this in balance. You know, we just we're different. Men need more testosterone. So you acknowledge what they do, which often looks like ego. And that is ego. But women have ego. It just doesn't look that way because women are not so much like, look at what I do. It's look at who I am, how I feel, what I need, you know, she wants hugs, she wants affection, she wants romance, she wants dates, you know, guys that don't understand women are thinking, God, women are so needy, uh, you know, so women, men think the women are needy, women think men are egotistical, no, women have, are more aware of their needs, that's a quality of estrogen, and men are more aware of what they want, and that's a quality of testosterone, and what we want is to be accomplished, to achieve, to make a difference, and that's called success if we simplify it. So these three little takeaways, good idea. <clears throat> Another one is, that makes sense. Another one is, you're right. <laughs> you nod your head, you're right. That's true, that's true. And then give a point of view from your perspective. And if you disagree with him, you, you can always say, well, that makes sense. I also have a different point of view, and you say it. You don't have to submit your authenticity to a man but you don't dump anything on him. And dump is what I mean by <clears throat> uh, complain to him. Uh, this is a big, now we're in, that, we're in the stage of you're in a relationship and then things aren't working the way you want every day. And so women have a tendency to sort of say everything they feel about a guy. And we don't want to hear negativity. <clears throat> you don't want to hear negativity. Nobody wants to hear negativity. You know, so I'm not telling women, gee, you can't tell your feelings and he can or something like that. I'm just saying that particularly in a relationship, it's like you're on a job interview. And a job interview, they always say, you know, what's your biggest weakness? And so what do you say? It's a standard routine. I think my biggest weakness is I give too much. I work too hard. I don't get enough rest at home. Right. <laughs> That's the biggest weakness. You don't say, you know, I'm lazy. I don't get things. <laughs> I get too angry at people. No, you don't do that. Okay, come on now. So, and women, you're the masters of makeup. I mean, you're always making yourself look good, look good, look good. Then you get on a date with a guy, not all of you, but some of you, and you just start blasting him. You're like, well, I don't think you ought to do this. And what do you think about that? Well, I didn't disagree with that. And, you know, there's just this huge sort of, I'll say what I think and how I feel. Um, that's not what a relationship is about. Uh, a relationship is about being authentically loving. It's being authentic, but also having uh, working at having tact how do i communicate what's going on inside of me in a way where it can be heard because whenever you communicate anything inside of you and somebody can hear it you're going to feel greater intimacy that's what we're all wanting is to feel connection but if you communicate what's inside of you in a way where someone can't hear it you're not going to experience that intimacy you just it's like trying to walk through a wall you're not going to make through it and women, some women have the idea that, well, if I'm loved, they should hear everything about me. I should be accepted everything. And yes, that's true. But at the same time, you have to recognize that certain things can't be heard. Human beings have limitations and criticism, complaining about your partner, are giving message that sounds like you're complaining about your partner and you're saying to them, you're not good enough. Nobody wants to hear it, not, not just men. Women don't want to hear it either. So what do you do? When you need something more, 
you ask for it. You don't back it up with complaints. You know, hey, would you do this next time? Would you pick me up next time like this? Or would you do this for me as a favor? Would you do this for me? You know, it's requesting things, not demanding things. If you're upset, now this is really important for women to get. Whenever you're upset with a man, and, and let's say you're saying, I only asked. If you're upset with a man, it means you're not happy with him. Put it simple. I'm not happy with you. I want you to do this. Would you do that? Now, those are all the right words, except I'm not happy with you. But just the tone of voice says to a man, he has failed. <clears throat> now, you're asking for more, and you're telling him what he's done already is not good enough. Now, you think in your mind, saying to somebody, you're not good enough, give me more, is a reasonable thing. From a man's point of view, why should I give you more if you haven't appreciated what I've given you so far? I'll just say that again. Why should I give you more if what I've done, which is my best, is if this is not good enough, why would I bother? And just think about this for a moment. Go into the man's world of success and testosterone, and I'm going to a job, and the job really doesn't pay. Now, payment is a need that we all have, but payment is also the recognition that you succeeded. You know, people pay me more, I feel more successful. It's a natural thing. So I go to a job and they don't pay me. And I keep going back. <laughs> I would have to be stupid to keep going back to a job that doesn't pay me. And then they're now asking me to work more hours. Are you kidding? I'm not gonna do that. So if you wanna ask more from a man, you always have to only ask for more when what you're getting is good enough. And I know that doesn't make sense right away, but the flip side of it also I explained is that why would you go to a job that wants more from you when they don't even pay you for what you're doing? So what it means is to find love in your heart. And it's hard for women today to find love in their heart. Uh, they can feel their need for more. Okay, neediness for more is not necessarily love. It's gratitude. It's love. Gratitude is saying, gosh, I have what I need. And but love is a confusing thing because, oh, gosh, I would in the mind. It works really fast. It kind of goes, if you just gave me everything I need, you're the perfect man for me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once being with a woman and I said to her, if you just didn't drink, you'd be perfect for me. Would you just stop drinking? <laughs> it just seems so easy for me because I didn't drink. OK, so it's just like. Hey, just give up drinking. Well, that was a big stopper for her, I'll tell you. <laughs> it was a major makeover for her. And <clears throat> she wasn't the right person for me, clearly. But the, the point I'm making there is, is that we make these requests of others because it just seems so easy for us, maybe not so easy for them, because we really do have these different needs and different motivations and, and different ways to cope with the stress of our lives. And one of the great things, if you can do, we can just stand back for a moment and recognize how can you make a man feel successful? Those little phrases, that's always helpful. Not demanding, that's always helpful. But the real key thing is to truly experience that he is successful in providing something that's meaningful to you. And this is a real profound, this is not fake. It doesn't fake. It's just like... It's like uh, whether he's conscious of it or not, it's, there's a reality. Do I truly make a difference in your life? And if I'm not making a difference in your life and in your mind you're going, I just want to get him and then I'll get my difference, it, it's not going to sell. It doesn't, it doesn't make him bond to you. He needs to really feel the truth. And you need to really experience the truth inside of you that this guy makes a difference in my life. So there's a real felt appreciation for what he has to offer. Without that, men don't bond. And women are afraid, uh, particularly older women, as you're getting beyond your 30s, you know, you've sort of been this sort of energetic 20-year-old, I'm independent, I can do it myself. And now you're in your 30s and you're feeling more independent. That's all masculine energy. Nothing wrong with it as long as it's balanced with feminine energy. But often, you don't have the support in your life to bring you back to feminine. Feminine side of you is relationship-oriented. It's emotional. It's vulnerable. It's intuitive. It's receptive. These are, and, and, and here's the big word, dependent. Oh, my gosh, I can't be dependent on someone. Are you kidding? Why would I want to be with you if you don't need me for something? Now, I'm not saying be weak and wimpy dependent, but needing a man. You know, if you need, if you're hungry, you need food, right? And so I give you food, you're really happy. So that's what real vulnerability is. Everybody talks about vulnerability is, 
is, oh, I'm so hurt, I'm so sensitive, I'm so gloom and doom. No, vulnerability is I'm so happy you're here, okay? That's vulnerability, because see, when you have a need, then when somebody fulfills that need, and that's what love is, love is the acknowledgement. One aspect of love is that it acknowledges that you are just what I need. Oh my God, who doesn't want that? That's particularly what men want. Women want it, men want it, and need it about 10 times more. That's it, and women need and they don't always know this, and particularly independent women don't know this, what they need is a greater awareness of what's going on inside themselves. So what to summarize all this, my favorite technique for women, and I kind of hinted at it, and, and too much information. As you get a little more intimate in a relationship, closer with a man, I don't mean sex. I'm telling you, slow down on the sex thing. Uh, you just basically... These guys, they all think they're entitled to sex because women are giving it out, okay? It's kind of like, well, that woman had no problem. I mean, she gave me head the first day. What's the big deal here, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you know, you just go slow with it. That's it. Go slow. He has to earn his way in, so to speak. But really, it's getting to know you, and you're getting to know him, and you're feeling safe with him, and he's, you know, uh, seems like a really good guy. You like him a lot. You, you find him interesting. He's curious and your heart is open to him. Then your body really wants him to connect more on a physical level. What I see is that women have very low self-esteem, uh, feel very insecure. They get with a guy and they feel like unworthy inside. Oh, why would he love me? I'm not, I'm an awful person. And so therefore I'll do whatever he wants and I'll do whatever he wants and then he'll love me. And that could all be subconscious. That's called low self-esteem. And so suddenly you become seductive and sexual and I'll give it out. Look at me and all this. This is all very low self-esteem. Now, not all women who put out like that have low self-esteem. They're just looking at the competition. <laughs> I mean, they're really just looking around like men expect it. And, and it's hard to when men are expecting it and everybody else is giving it out to feel like you've got value and being true to yourself, which is go slow with this thing. And let it unfold one layer after another, after another, after another. Let there be a relationship that grows in intimacy as opposed to expecting it right away. It's like a seed in the garden. It doesn't turn into a plant overnight. You have to water it and nurture it and take care of it. And then it grows. It gets a little bigger, 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 bigger. Let that happen. So I'm, I'm a big, big fan of going slow. Uh, you know, if I was talking to other guys, I wouldn't talk this much about it. They feel like I'm betraying them. But ironically, a lot of guys today that I know more and more in their 50s, they're kind of saying, wait a second, I'm going to go a little slow here, too, uh, because they're not just um, uh, a younger man. This is part of sexuality and men is we have a life force and, and that life force has to flow in different ways. And the more accomplishment you have, the more cultured you are, meaning there's different outlets for your creativity, then that energy can flow in different ways. But when you're immature and you don't have a lot of confidence, you don't have a lot of different ways to express yourself, sexuality is a way the most primitive brain can express that aliveness and so forth. So these younger guys are all, all into having sex so here's your phrase to use, magic phrase for men who want it and you're, ready, you're not ready to give it. And you don't want it yet, really. You, you, that's the key is you do it when you want to do it. Authenticity. So at this point, um, uh, and of course, authenticity doesn't mean, well, I'm authentically insecure, so I'm going to do this. No, <laughs> authentically. Authenticity is that you know, I've got this immature, insecure part of me. I'm not going to indulge it. You know, I'm a higher being. I've got more awareness here. But I have some wisdom uh, in my life. So here you are with some wisdom, knowing from past experiences that jumping into bed doesn't always work for you. Then that's your authentic message. You can just say to a guy, he's making the moves, is, oh, yeah, I need to slow down now. And you kind of go, he goes, why don't you want it? Oh, yes, every cell in my body wants it. But it just hasn't worked out for me. And I just need to go slow. I hope you can respect that. Ah, what can he say? And, and, and then what you said in that phrase, I just want to point out being a man, is he'll hear that one little thing, every cell in my body wants to have sex with you. <laughs> he goes, okay, I did it. <laughs> and they're just looking for the recognition that, that you want to have sex with them. Men so much want to feel that they're wanted. It's, it's a, a needy thing. But if they don't earn that, uh, then they become weak and they lose commitment and so forth. It, you ha it has to be when you truly are ready because you want to do it because he's a wonderful guy and you want to share more of your life with him and he's special and so forth. 
then you're willing to share all of who you are with him. Because when you have sex, it's very different for men and women. When a man has sex, men can be turned on to tons of women that I'm not even interested. I mean, God, look at this. I, a guy can look at all the internet porn. He would never, ever, after having a conversation with any of those women, would never want to talk to her again. But he'll have sex with her once. And that's the, that's the system that they found is that men don't go back. Okay, they, if they have sex right away, they move on to the next, they move on to the next. And why is that? Because first of all, they'll have sex with anybody, practically. But the second thing is, it's less known, is that when a man has sex, he, it's very intimate for him, he gets really close. Suddenly his oxytocin levels increase five times and oxytocin inhibits testosterone. So that's why he goes to sleep, that's why he tends to pull away after sex, he can't breathe. You know, there's a tendency of withdrawing. Whenever men withdraw, it's they're needing to rebuild testosterone. They're trying to pull away from the influence of estrogen. And so it's a natural process. So let men pull away. Encourage them to pull away. Don't rush the closeness. Instead, send text messages of pictures of you being happy without him. And that's counterintuitive for women. They think that, oh, if I'm showing him I'm happy without him, he'll think I don't love him that much. I mean, some women actually think that. And on a deeper level, maybe many more feel that way, which is when he's in his cave, when he's pulled away, I should be unhappy. I should be missing him. I should be sorry. Because if a woman is pulling away, she wants to feel like he's missing you and I can't, I can't live without you. And what do I have to do to get you open again? That makes you feel all special. Uh, when a guy pulls away, the best thing, and some of these needy guys, they're, they're, uh, I write about them in Conscious Men, they're more in touch with their female side. So one part of them is saying, well, how could you go out and have a good time? You ignore that message. Ignore his female side. You're strong in your female side. Hey, I'm not just about having a relationship with my life. I have with you. I have a life. You know, you're dessert. I mean, really, look at men as dessert. Don't make them the main meal. If you make a man the main meal in your life, you're regressing back to these traditional relationships that don't work anymore. And that's where a man's going to put you in a box and you can't get out. And you certainly don't want that. Uh, but you do want a man. And so you think that, okay, I'll pretend to get in that box. But you'll die in that box. Women today want to have both sides of them. It's a masculine side and a feminine side. They want their independence. They want their dependence. They're afraid of their dependence. And what the way you find by connecting with your dependent side, your emotional side, your vulnerable side, you're going to experience inner dependence. And so one practical takeaway, again, is once you're more close to a guy, then you start doing this technique where you get together and you go, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I just want to talk about my day for you know a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, start with five, and just start talking about problems. And then he'll want to interrupt and say something like, oh, you should do this. Oh, no, no, I just, I just need to vent this and I'm going to feel so much better. You know, you don't have to say anything. I just need to get this out and then get it out. Talk about some things, too much information about complaints that have nothing to do with him. And when you complain about things that have nothing to do with him, he thinks, man, this woman, I can make her happy. You know, she's great. You know, her problems are so little. Uh, this is little stuff, you know, not this big stuff. And anything about him becomes big stuff. And that's what women don't understand as well. They look at a guy and they say, could you just put your shoes over here? And you're telling him what to do over little stuff. In your mind, you're thinking, well, it's only little stuff. In his mind, if you cr criticize little stuff, it negates all the big stuff he's done. It's like, hey, I'm the president of the universe. You know, don't tell me where to put my shoes. And, and so you don't understand because you're not a man. You have to understand that any kind of correction to men comes across as criticism. Unless it's a big problem, then we understand. Well, it's a big problem. It makes sense to me. I was two hours late. I can see I upset you. <laughs> and you want to win big points with a guy is don't even be upset about that. Just say, oh, my gosh, you know, you must have really been busy. You know, just something complimentary even. And the guy's going to think you're an angel in heaven. And next time, because he's thinking you're an angel in heaven, he's going to try harder to be there on time. It's it's often just so confusing if you don't understand this whole dynamic of the way men's pleasure system, his motivation system, his uh, happiness system, which is what regulates stress levels, is totally different from a woman's. And yet on another level, we're all just the same. Okay, you know, women can do math, men can be parents, and men can be mothering, nurturing, supportive, all that good stuff. We have potentials in our brain to use different parts. But what we don't have the potential to do is to change our hormonal system. 
You know, women, you have a hormonal system that makes babies. Men don't. It is very complicated. It is a whole nother system. Um, men don't realize that little things make a big difference to women. Women don't realize that, you know, criticizing little things, correcting little things has a big impact on men. So there's a, there's a flip there. And, but there's, but I'm talking about men are get really motivated. They go, okay, I'm scoring a point, I'm scoring points, doing little things. It's an accumulation of lots of things that, that really wins over a woman. It helps stimulate the oxytocin and lowers her stress, makes her feel good. So then couples are all doing that. And then women start instituting this thing, which is you just lost all your points. Okay. <laughs> just, even if you feel it, don't say it. Just don't say it. He already knows it. It just happened. You know, you know, ultimately, and we're all looking for this. And I don't want to suggest that everybody's perfect at this. We have our moments, but it's unconditional love. Unconditional love means never taking away points. It means that you give more points for things uh, but if you, if your partner is not giving you what you need, you basically ignore them, take care of yourself and then give them more. Uh, cause if you give a man what he needs, he will get, always give more. Just as if you give a woman what she needs, she will always give more. That, you just have to know that's the reality. Punishment is something of the old age. You know, shaming people is something of the old age. It's unconscious people. But once we're really looking for last, lasting love, you know, and our relationships are no longer based upon money and survival and security, whereas we feel more successful within ourselves, what happens is the thing that really helps us to grow to a higher level, a higher love that we can experience is, is uh, unconditional love. And the doorway to unconditional love is... Uh, in, in, in practical terms, for men, it's to understand women. It's compassion. As men begin to feel compassion for what women go through and what their wives go through, what their daughters go through, it, it opens up such an amazing love is for men to feel compassion. Now, what allows me to feel compassion is when my wife is vulnerable. Okay, if she's Miss Independent, I can never feel compassion. If she's got it all together, I don't feel compassion. Uh, but women are designed to feel a lot more than men and men do feel a lot without a doubt, but women feel more. And if they don't, they're repressing themselves. Biologically, the feeling part of the brain in every woman is twice as big. <laughs> you're designed to feel more. And if you're not, you've got a problem. And, and so it's, if men are designed under moderate stress to detach. And if men don't detach, they've got a problem. They're insecure. When men are insecure, their testosterone turns into estrogen and they become like women and they have more emotion. And at any time a man is really strongly emotional, his estrogen levels are shooting up and his testosterone's going down. When a man is detaching, he pulls away. Actually, what's happening is he's rebuilding his testosterone in that moment by pushing down the estrogen. That freaks women out because they don't have that mechanism inside. Uh, as a beneficial mechanism to cope with stress. So what's happening is when he's pulling away to it's little problems, little problems, she thinks, oh my God, what is it? And she's looking for reassurance. She starts asking, what are you feeling? Whatever. Don't ever ask a man what he's feeling when he's pulled away. You're feeling disconnected. Don't ask him what he's feeling. And then just say something like this. You're just thinking about what I just said, right? And he goes, yeah, give him an opportunity to be successful and answer your question with a yeah, as opposed to, what are you feeling right now? You know, he might be feeling mad. He might be trying to get away from feeling mad. He might not know what he's feeling because he's thinking. And this is a thing that happens to men is that as a good response to lower stress is we detach from our emotion. Detachment is a male quality. But when women detach around little things, they're, having, they're really having a big psychological problem. That's why so much of therapy for women is all about getting in touch with your feelings. You know, getting in touch with your feelings therapy is only useful to men when there's big problems, okay? So of course, you know, when big bad things happen, men get very emotional and they need to talk about those emotions like a woman. But women, when problems are little, if they really want to come back to vulnerability, it's like, be truthful. You know, oh my gosh, I'm so concerned. I don't know what I'm going to do with the kids today. I've got this going on. I got this going on. I feel concerned about that. I feel disappointed. I wish I had this support. I wish I had this support. It's so frustrating. I'm driving in my car today and there's so much traffic and I still have to get there. That's called feelings and frustration, disappointments, concerns. I feel embarrassed. You know, I got up today. I was going to do this. I didn't get anything done. 
this is vulnerability. And women will think, particularly strong, independent women, they think, well, why should I share that? He's just going to think I'm a loser. No, he's going to connect with your authentic self. But what you do is you make sure you let him know. I call this Venus talk where you share your emotions. You feel it in your body and talk a little bit about it. That's it. He'll connect with you in your body. He'll be turned on to you more. And it's the opposite of what she thinks. And it's the opposite of what he thinks. Because what he'll think if you share any emotions and upsets about little things, his first reaction is, well, that's stupid. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, why would you feel that way? Well, there's no problem. Just take this cut. Just take this exit off the freeway. Don't talk to that person. Who cares about this? You ought to get another job. You don't have to do that job. You're better than that. He wants to give advice. So women don't share what's inside and women don't share what's inside. So she's Miss Independent Tough Woman. So he doesn't connect with her. So understanding this new challenge is for women to become a little more vulnerable, share a little bit more, just go at this one little step at a time, but preface it and say something to him like, I just want to download my day to you. I just want to share what happened and then I'll be done. And it only take five minutes and then go to 10 later. As you get better at, a lot of women can't do it for a few minutes. I say, what are you feeling? They go, I don't know. I don't know. I got to do this. I got to do this. Oh, so you're frustrated. You have to do this and you're frustrated. <laughs> then they're stuck there. You got to go a little deeper. What am I disappointed about? What am I concerned about? But make sure none of those upset feelings, those called negative emotions, have to do with him. There's so many things in your busy life that you have going on that has nothing to do with him. Share those feelings. He's there, and then I always end after a few minutes by talking about, but I'm really happy with my job. I'm really lucky I get to do this. I really appreciate my, my boss or my employees. I had a great job, and, and I really appreciate you. I mean, gosh, the other day you did this for me, and now you're listening to me. It just makes me feel so good that I feel connected to you, that you know what I go through, but I also had a lovely ride home. Whatever, you balance the negative with the positive, and he, and he thinks, I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. This lady, she's got all these sensitive feelings, but she's got all this love, too. I mean, and if I can listen to her and make her happy, it's a job I'll be happy to do. And, and that's it. It's just a, a few brief moments of showing your femininity. Let it shine. And women have no role model for that. No role model at all. Because in the past, women did not even know what their vulnerable feelings were. They're not good at expressing feelings. Everybody says they are. They say stuff like, I feel abandoned. I feel rejected. I feel you don't love me. I feel nobody cares about me. Those are all thoughts. Those are feeling thoughts. She's in her head. She's feeling her thoughts. She's not feeling emotions. And you can be emotional. That's not feeling emotion. That's just being angry. You know, I'm afraid. You know? But to actually be present with somebody and share what's going on inside, this is a whole new skill for women. And, you know, you can, you can get by talking to another woman. You can just say, oh, my God, I was stuck on the freeway. And another woman knows just what that feels like for her. And she's going to go, I know, I know, I was there too. And you'll feel that connection. But when you're stuck on the freeway, a guy doesn't have the same experience as a woman. His emotions are going to be different. So he's not going to immediately relate. So he doesn't connect with all your complaints unless you throw a few emotions in there. And that's the most powerful part of it.